Um, quite a few people uh, join us uh, for this call. They come from uh, a variety of backgrounds. Some are physicians, some are hospitalists, some are nurse practitioners, others are coming from a simulation background from either sim center or uh, clinical skills directors. Um, we had asked all of you to provide us with some uh, background into what you were hoping to uh, get out of this call, and some of the responses we received had to do with uh, expanding your uh, offering in terms of ultrasound education, uh, improving the skills of your learners, um, how to train your residents in a more effective fashion, how to train medical students, physician assistants, nurses, um, and other allied healthcare professionals, uh, how to be more effective uh, and efficient with your time, and then how to uh, best utilize uh, uh, ultrasound in simulation type scenarios. So um, lots of excitement uh, being generated around ultrasound. This uh, happens to be from the most recent SAEM conference uh, that we had during the competition that is uh, lovingly named Sono Games. Um, and uh, this is Andrew Teplo uh, overseeing some of the students here. You can uh, sense the uh, palpable excitement, uh, fear, uh, the decision making that they're going through in their minds. Uh, as they're working through uh, a clinical scenario. So hopefully in the next um, uh, 20 minutes or so, I'll be able to cover um, some of the uh, uh, questions that uh, you had, um, and I'll be able to provide you a little bit of insight into uh, what we are doing to help uh, um, meet those requirements and um, keep up with the uh, trends, and uh, perhaps even end with some of the things that are uh, coming down the pipeline. So. Just as a background, we uh, in emergency medicine are the vanguard for point of care ultrasound education and we're regarded by our colleagues as the leaders. Um, in setting up ultrasound training, we have uh, come across traditional barriers of, uh, uh, you know, it's only a few of us versus uh, many learners. Uh, there's a limited number of uh, ultrasound faculty and ultrasound champions at institutions. Um, the access to patient pathology is, um, is somewhat challenging. Uh, when you want to scan that patient with a AAA or a nice pericardial fusion with tamponade, they may not necessarily be available. Uh, they may be arriving at 3 in the morning with one or two residents around, uh, but the rest of them miss out. There's generally a paucity of ultrasound machines available, especially when you're trying to uh, organize uh, large courses for, um, uh, for multiple learners. And then, as we all know, um, these courses provide limited sick time it's really the practice that is needed and the ongoing training and providing that in a time efficient fashion uh, becomes difficult. Some of the trends that uh, we're going to talk uh, about, there's actually three main ones that I picked out from the um, request that the audience submitted. Uh, we're going to talk about um, the standards, expectations, and breadth of ultrasound uh, applications and how they have continued to expand. It seems like we can't uh, pick up any journal without reading one or two uh, ultrasound uh, articles uh, and new novel applications. At the same time, uh, it seems to me that we as uh, emergency medicine physicians are being called upon to train our colleagues and other specialties um, across different um, uh, medical backgrounds such as nurse practitioners or PAs uh, and in the medical schools as well. As we do so, the uh, Tracking of progress and assessment uh, becomes uh, difficult and challenging. And then finally, um, ultrasound is taking a larger role in simulation. Uh, it's hard to imagine a simulation scenario for patients who are in shock or uh, trauma type scenarios without the use of uh, ultrasound as part of that uh, medical decision making. So integrating ultrasound into simulation uh, becomes important. Let's start with the first uh, component, which is the breadth of content. Um, and so pardon me as I toggle a little bit between some of them and the presentation. Um, to keep up with the uh, demand for uh, increased breadth of content, uh, some of them has recently introduced uh, additional content that uh, is tiered. We start off with the very basic anatomy and physiology. We continue on to our core clinical modules. And then we recently started to introduce advanced clinical modules, particularly in cardiology and obstetrics and gynecology. In addition, we have a series of uh, modules that are catered towards ultrasound-guided uh, procedures. 
just to give everyone just a, a taste of uh, what these uh, modules look like, the anatomy and physiology module seeks to reintroduce to residents uh, or uh, frame uh, for medical students the regional anatomy and then introduce ultrasound. It seems like we are always in a rush to teach ultrasound and folks have forgotten what the regional anatomy looks like. Uh, and so all of these modules take a deep dive into anatomy, the physiology of that particular uh, area of interest before going into what it looks like under ultrasound and what is the appropriate technique for imaging that uh, particular uh, anatomic location. Next we move on to uh, some of our core clinical modules, for example, cardiology. Uh, here we not only talk about uh, the uh, different uh, imaging uh, guidelines, the different windows, uh, but then we move into case studies and start to introduce pathology. In this uh, particular module, we talk about right heart strain, pericardial effusions, um, hypertrophic heart disease and cardiomyopathies, etc. As the learners advance, they can move on to some of our more advanced content. For example, this is one of three parts uh, for advanced uh, cardiac uh, ultrasound. In this first section over here, we start to introduce Doppler ultrasound, measurements for cardiac uh, output, PA pressure measurements, etc. And then finally, we have uh, uh, introduced, as I mentioned, some of the ultrasound uh, guided uh, procedure modules. Uh, these three happen to be part of the series of central venous uh, cannulation. And what's important here is that they can serve as a basis for uh, any type of uh, credentialing program within a hospital where you're looking to uh, make sure that there's a uniform training for physicians of all specialties uh, across the uh, institution. As I mentioned, we're being called upon to train our colleagues. Um, and so uh, let's take the example of medical schools where they have recently started uh, introducing ultrasound into the uh, curriculum. Uh, into anatomy, physiology, the introduction to clinical medicine courses, the core clinical rotations, and the uh, fourth year clerkships. Um, this can serve as a tool um, to meet all four years of those uh, curriculum. Um, you can pick and choose modules here that would pertain to the practice of a physician assistant. Um, you can um, create content here that is for your colleagues uh, in OB or family practice, uh, etc. All right, let's go back here to our, uh, our presentation. Now, to meet the, um, the hands-on component, Sonosan has recently uh, introduced uh, quite a bit of content uh, into the simulator as well. Uh, the premise behind this is that you can't really learn ultrasound just by looking at didactic content. And you really have to hold the probe in your hand and get comfortable with uh, minutes of the probe. Uh, image acquisition and image interpretation. So with that, um, we have paired all of these modules with some uh, hands-on training within the Sonos simulator. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with Sonosim, uh, this is not, not a, any product pitch, um, but just to give you the background, I'm sitting at my computer desk. I'm uh, holding the uh, probe uh, on actually a small scan pad, and as I manipulate the probe, the image is changing here in real time. Uh, my point here is actually just to show some of the features that we have introduced to match the uh, expanded breadth of content. Um, in this uh, cardiology uh, case, uh, Sonosim has started to add some uh, advanced features. So for example, if uh, you wanted to perhaps uh, measure M mode or look at M mode, look at uh, continuous wave Doppler or color flow Doppler, these features are now available. We've introduced uh, calipers that are specific for the specialty, uh, either cardiac calipers or OB calipers uh, alongside formula sheets that allow you to perform calculations. Importantly, uh, we were asked to um, create features whereby you could track what students are doing. So, uh, for example, let's go to a, an obstetrical case. Uh, and we'll look here at this uh, uh, fetus. This looks like a uh, uh, head down uh, position. We can clearly see the, um, uh, the baby's head over here. We'll enlarge this, change our gain a little bit, freeze this image, bring on our OB calipers to uh, perform a head circumference measurement. 
I apologize that in the interest of time, I'm not uh, uh, going to be too precise over here. But you can see here that we've uh, performed a measurement. It's dated to approximately 36 weeks, estimated gestational age. Uh, your residents can now um, uh, annotate their clinical findings over here. And when they save this, this is going up to the cloud, show you where this lives uh, in just a few moments. So again, the content within the uh, hands-on simulation has expanded in a uh, fashion that is commensurate with the expansion of our um, uh, didactic uh, cases. And you can see here that we've added quite a few simulations uh, for all of these specialties. All right, let's go back here. Now, tracking progress was identified uh, as the difficulties that educators were running into. Um, there is a lot of data that we need to store what the students are doing in terms of their um, uh, didactic reading, how they're doing on their hands-on uh, training, um, how they are performing on either uh, direct observational examinations or OSCE type exams as well. Uh, Sonacine recently introduced the uh, performance tracking software uh, to accommodate that. And essentially what uh, what this does is allows you to create an e-portfolio for each one of your students. Um, you you as, a, uh, uh, as an educator have the ability to completely track everything that your students are doing. Uh, in this case, we're going through a brief uh, demonstration of what this looks like. We're going to select a uh, particular medical student over here. Um, we're going to drill down and see which content they have completed. We can see that they've completed their entire didactic session. session. They scored 80% on the assessment examination. Now, if you recall, while in the simulator, I had saved some images and annotated them. And when we press save, it again went into the cloud, into this ePortfolio. Now, when you access that uh, uh, session for the student, you can see their saved image with its interpretation. So basically, this is image archiving for all of these simulated images. You can look at the, uh, your entire residency class um, uh, quickly, or again, you can look at a particular student. You can create subgroups if you're, for example, working within a medical school. Um, so again, manage multiple groups, drill down on any particular student uh, as needed. Okay. Now, simulation is playing a larger role in um, ultrasound education. As you all know, the uh, ASAP guidelines, which are currently being uh, uh, upgraded and, and overhauled, have encouraged the use of simulation um, on high-quality ultrasound simulators. Um, they are also uh, identified as a possible resource for the competency assessment uh, in terms of technique and uh, image interpretation. We mentioned uh, earlier the use of uh, um, uh, simulation as part of a standardized direct observational tool or the objective structured clinical examinations, uh, the OSCEs. I started off our presentation with a uh, picture from Sono Games. Um, and here are just some other examples of how uh, we have been integrated into these kind of skills assessments. Uh, this is a uh, picture from the Ultrasound World Cup uh, that was held in 2014. Uh, another one is coming up shortly uh, in Lubbock, Texas. This is another examination, uh, excuse me, example of um, ultrasound being integrated into a medical simulation that involves a mannequin. Uh, and this was a critical care type uh, scenario. Now, we've always used real ultrasound data in SonoSim, and the cases that we offered were derived from uh, from real patients and their presentations uh, match those. Uh, but what we were hearing from uh, our educators were that, was that they wanted to be able to create cases that meet their own uh, educational and testing objectives. So we introduced the Sonosem Case Builder, which allows you to create your own cases uh, to match your educational needs. You can either choose from uh, pre-configured uh, templates, such as trauma or critical care, you can see that what we do here is we offer you the opportunity to populate uh, the different regions of the body with uh, data sets. 
You can preview these data sets uh, within our navigator over here and hear a narration of what those uh, data sets show. And once you're content with that, you simply apply that to the uh, particular point and continue to populate the different regions of the body with the ultrasound uh, data sets that would match your objectives for that uh, learner. Once you're done, you can save that as a customized case within the SOMA simulator, uh, and then you can begin scanning. Um, as you know, you can use SOMASEM on either a mannequin uh, or a live uh, uh, person. Uh, this is uh, an extension of what we've done um, with Lairdal uh, uh, Medical. So Lairdal, as you know, is a manufacturer of high fidelity simulators. Um, and in conjunction with um, the Sonosin product, which is now integrated into the skin, you can create scenarios that marry a whole bunch of physiological parameters, uh, heart rate, vital signs, uh, the patient's breathing, uh, seizure activity, et cetera, and really create some uh, phenomenal uh, simulations that integrate uh, ultrasound uh, into the uh, medical decision making. And these are being offered for uh, trauma, for uh, critical care, cardiac resuscitation, and OB. Uh, as we look uh, into the future, um, Sonosin has got a number of um, products that we're really uh, excited about and uh, currently are in development. Um, we are currently working on some needle-based technology that will allow you to hold a needle in your hand in conjunction with our uh, uh, Sonosin probe uh, on surfaces that can be uh, virtually pierced. Uh, this is uh, um, some really neat uh, tactile uh, experience, again, two-handed technique. Uh, we've also um, uh, been asked to, as part of our ePortfolio, allow users to save images from their actual ultrasound cases. And the idea here is that when your resident graduates or when your medical school student is applying uh, to residency, they can have one ePortfolio that has a record of what they've done on didactics, on their testing, on their simulation, and then on their real ultrasound uh, training. Uh, and that can be used as, uh, uh, again, one, one portfolio that you can access to uh, get an understanding of their education. And then finally, uh, something that we're incredibly excited about and working with a number of uh, uh, organizations and institutions uh, with is our uh, performance uh, assessment metrics. Uh, we have uh, recently completed the validation of uh, metrics for ultrasound competency assessment and are working to build in those metrics to our simulator. And the hope is that um, a resident or a medical student could uh, sit on the Sonosim platform uh, and complete a certain number of tasks following which the computer would be able to automatically uh, provide you uh, with a score that is validated uh, and graded against um, uh, sonographers of varying uh, degrees of competency. We're very excited about uh, everything that uh, uh, we are currently offering. Um, if uh, anybody had any questions about um, uh, the product itself, again, this was not meant to be a uh, presentation at Sonosin, but we'd be happy to do that uh, on a separate occasion. Just send us an email. Um, we have uh, a number of new ways of offering Sonosin. Uh, the one that we're most excited about is being shown here on screen. Uh, it's Mac or PC compatible. Uh, you can install it on a uh, personal computer. Uh, we have residency programs that provide this for every one of the residents. And um, this year we've launched uh, with several medical schools where they include this as part of their uh, new physician's um, doctor's bag. They have a Sonosim unit uh, with which they can scan uh, and get practice uh, on their own. Really want to thank everybody for your time and joining me this morning. And uh, again, if you have any questions at all, uh, feel free to email us at uh, uh, info at sonosim.com, and we will get back to you with the answers to your questions. Take care, and have a wonderful day today. Bye-bye.